It's ironic because I was hanging out with these kids and, and they turned to me and they said, why are you gonna go to Bosnia? We have a Bosnia right here in LA. Actually, I've been asked this question many times, like where do I get the ideas for my work or where does it come from? It comes from my struggles in my own life. In 1971, I got arrested for drugs and was sent to Rikers Island. And upon my release, I still did not feel that I was ready to change my life. And the second time I got arrested and I went to Rikers Island again, this time for robbery, I decided that I was going to do something to change my situation. When I came out, I started going back to school where I studied graphic arts technology and then started doing social in-depth documentary type photography. Uh, I remember my first trip was to Vietnam in 1989 to cover the Vietnamese pullout in Cambodia. After that, uh, National Geographic hired me to go to Mauritius and then from there I went to Mozambique and worked with uh, kids of war and in 90 I went over to Romania right after the fall of Ceausescu and decided to look at the institutions that many of the children were being kept in and Romania turned into a six year long project of going back and forth and covered many different sort of facets of the institutions there but then also looking at a good part of life in Transylvania. Well, with the gang project, it was very hard. Um, it was when the riots had broken out, April 1992, and I packed my bags and went right to L.A. Uh, my idea about Los Angeles was always to kind of do a West Side Story, kind of romantic documentary, a project about gangs. But I, you know, I was very naive with the whole L.A. scene. When I got there, I knew no one. I remember getting off the plane that night and being completely overwhelmed and eventually hooked up with one guy who brought me into his sort of neighborhood, this blood gang, and which was in Watts. And I thought it was very interesting to talk to these families in that neighborhood because back in 65 they had riots in Watts in L.A. So I wanted to talk to families who had lived through both riots about what had changed or what had gotten worse. You gotta understand how this gang thing works. I mean, there are over a thousand gangs in Los Angeles and over 150,000 gang members, you know. But with that said, you know, I'd say 80% of the time within a gang, there's nothing going on, it's complete boredom. People just kicking back, drinking beer, listening to music. So one night we're just kicking back with, uh, it was a night of a truce, we were kicking it with uh, Evergreen. And one car came by and they said, F you Evergreen, and they said, F you back, which is a classic sort of dis disrespect to each other. And um, then I saw another car was coming up this real slow and these black guns came out of the window and it's at night so things were happening very quick and then as close as we are here to the curb is as close as that car came and that's when the bullet fire just started happening very fast it's not like in the movies the, all this big bang bang it's very kind of fast and quiet and very low kind of pop 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 and I had a little fire hydrant I could creep down next to and I did and then one of the guys uh, took five bullets and he actually lived but uh, that was probably a real earth shattering night. It's ironic because uh, while I was in the middle of my gang project, I got an assignment to go to Bosnia. And, and that day I was hanging out with these kids and they were throwing bottles at the school bus. And they turned to me and they said, why are you gonna go to Bosnia? We have a Bosnia right here in LA. So I kind of stuck it out. I would hope that you know they feel that you know someone took care because I remember uh, one individual gang member, uh, Scoob Dog, who actually was was killed. 
he said to me, you know, why would anybody want to see a book about us? I mean, who cares about us? And and uh, I just felt, I just kept on saying to him, I think it's a very important book. And, and uh, since I made this book, 11 kids are dead. So I hope that, uh, um, that they get something out of it. this particular project was it's really just an extension of the LA gang project I mean all those kids that I was photographing there in those gangs many of them are just being arrested and thrown into jail for a variety of charges so my idea was to uh, basically look at what happens to these kids and uh, not just to look at them on the inside sitting behind bars and trying to sort of deal with their lives that way. But what happens to them when they come out? The work does affect me, and so a way for me to deal with overwhelming issues of the day is I write them down, I keep journals. And then I sort of uh, try to process my, my experience with them by writing my own feelings among, next to their stories and it helps me sort of get through some of the darkest hours. Um, it's a book that, that really needs to be seen right now, that it's an issue that is not going to go away. You know, I just hope that people see the images and start to rally around the issue of incarceration. I mean, it's just, it's just not a, it, it just, I don't think it works. So my idea was to take a look at the younger people because there's still a sense of hope and I know that uh, quite a number of these kids in this juvenile project are really trying to redeem themselves and really trying to change themselves. They may not be the most well equipped, but they are trying. I mean, I've got kids that, you know, went from, from kidnapping to writing and some of them are, are working as journalists and some of them are raising families and others are working and some are still one foot in the street, some foot out of the street. So um, these are our children. These are America's children.